Hey everybody! Hello, Hello. world! Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to Lesbian Love. I am Jessica Clark. And I am Lacey Stone. We're talking about the topic of moving in. Ah. With each other. Right. <laughs> so um, you know, it's a hard topic, and a lot of us lesbians are known for that thing called the U-Haul. Yes. Because a lot of the different subjects that we talk about in uh, Lesbian Love are kind of applicable to, you know, most kind of relationships in any which way, shape, or form. Um, but the U-Hauler seems to be specifically for lesbians. It's attached to the lesbos. It is attached to the lesbos. So. Quite rightly, too. And why do you think we do that? Well, I think it's because... Well, Lacey. Um, yes, I guess... Dr. Jessica Clark. <laughs> Dr. Clark, what do you I think? Love that. Um, I don't know. I think it's women are. That was my pipe. Didn't really work out. <laughs> anyway, moving it looks on. a bit suspect. Um, I, <laughs> I think that um, I don't know. Are we going to be like going into like these really traditional gender roles? If I say that, I feel like women have like kind of a nesting thing. Like when women get happy, um, they tend to sort of like to create spaces to nest and be and be cozy and kind of really share and I also feel like women... Or are women, they cheap? Just kidding. <laughs> I also Did I say that? Not this one. Um, I also think that women, women in general and then obviously two women in a relationship, you get to a, you can get to a very deep, very great level of intimacy relatively Best. quickly. So that, there's that real fascination with each other and there's that real kind of need and want and an urge to kind of share and experience each other as much as possible. Um, and you want to sleep in the same bed, and you want a spoon, and you want to talk into the middle of the night, and you're spending like so much time together. <laughs> you're spending so much time together. The but then it's like, well, why don't we just move in? And you kind of lose sense of the fact that actually you've only been together for about three weeks. And all of a sudden you realize you're all wearing the same outfits, and you look got the same yeah. haircut, and yeah. it's very cliche. Yeah. So, in terms of our situation, it was challenging at first. I had never lived with anyone before, and Jessica had. And, you know, when you move in, for me, if I, I had never moved in with anyone before, so I, when I moved in with her, I was like, um, uh, this is really important. This means something to me. Like, right. this is a huge step for me. I, it, it, well, I, I'm not a U-Haul or I've never done that before. So I was like, if I'm gonna move in with her in New York, that means you're gonna give up your apartment and you're gonna bring all your stuff not, not anywhere. What am I talking about in New York? It's hard to find a good apartment in New York. So you're gonna give space up- Space is an issue in New York. Yeah, so you're giving up like this space that you've come to love. Right. And for another person. And you know, the thing, the thing, it was hard for me. I couldn't do it right away. I have a little trust issue problems and right. stuff like that. Um, so what helped was, you know, Jessica was very good about it, you know? She would stay with me at my apartment and I and, and and just work in with what that felt like, and I would stay with her for a while, and I slowly brought things over, and it got to that got to a weird point. I hadn't moved in with her, but I was sleeping over there every night, you know, and just going to my apartment to do work during the day and repack, so essentially, and repack. Essentially, it got to be annoying, um, and I think that was. We, yeah. And we were pretty lucky in that we live relatively it got close to each other. To pack but it was all like going time. backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And I think the issue, so and I. She has the nicer digs, you know what I mean? I so. wasn't particularly. Um, I out. I did too. Oh, that's very nice. It's true. Um, so I wasn't worried so much about the feeling of being like, well, this is it, you know, kind of moving, like if, if I start living with this woman, and particularly as you'd never lived with anyone before, and it was really very significant that to I you. That I love, yeah. Right, that you were emotionally, Other that, you than were, mom and dad. that you were romantically involved with. Um, the fact that that kind of signified a real deep kind of commitment wasn't what scared me. Um, I think what both of us did have problems with though, is that when you don't live with each other, and even more so if you have long distance relationships, but you kind of get to be kind of perfect for each other if you want to be. Like, you know, you get to kind of hide all the like junk food that you may or may not be secretively eating and you get to watch a really bad trash television like one of our good friends and it is is semi living with her girlfriend right now and she's like I only go home when I really 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 have to watch like Bravo shows and you know what I mean yeah and the other thing is in terms of our apartment is space 
there's no stairs and there was no doors, so there was no, no, it's a big loft type of a space. And I was worried about feeling a little claustrophobic. Right. You know what I mean? And about like everything kind of feeling like mine. So one of the things that we did do, and I would advise people to do, um, having experienced it both ways, is either find a new place that's like yours, both that's of good. yours, and it's a new thing, or if that's not practical or logical, or if, want, if somebody has a really great apartment, then really change things. We painted everything, we moved things we around, changed, like we, we really, really, like it felt, we like went and bought furniture together. It felt completely different to me, and I'd been in the space for about two years already, two or three years, three years, I think, um, and it felt completely different. And now, and now that we've been living together for the time that we have, I don't even really remember what it was like before. Um, and that's, it was really psychologically effective for both of us. Yeah, it was good. You know, so moving in, uh, just to go back to the points. Uh, Wait, so do, do we think that, the, what do we think about you hauling in general? It, like, we didn't do I it, think it'll think always it? be a part of our lesbian history. It's um, an embracive thing, I guess. It's, it's always gonna happen. You know, and, uh, you know, I don't know if it's meant in a mean way. It's kind of funny. I wish that the U-Haul relationships were a little more successful. They don't tend to end well. You think? Do you think that that tends to be? They don't tend to end well. It's like I'm gonna have babies with, you know, Sally, and we're gonna move in and live happily ever after. Let me tell you something. That's the movies. There is no real happily ever after. It's every hey. second of every day. You have to make every moment matter, and that is our ever after right now. That's called lazy backtracking because she put her foot in it right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very smoothly done, so I'll let her have the point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like it, it's not going to be all rose petal, you know. No, and and I think you're. I think definitely the arguing, the conflicts change because do people have different ideas of what clean and tidy is and different ideas of what organization is, and that's really difficult to start compromising time. on. It takes time. It's going to happen. Um, it can be scary, like. But it's also forces you to grow in your relationship because you know what? If you have a fight, no one gets to storm off home. And you can't be perfect anymore because trying to be perfect for the other person gets exhausting too. Right. And then you start hate being per hating being perfect and you want to meet somebody blaming, else. And you stop blaming to the be other perfect person. With. Just show her that you kind of are a dork. Okay? But yes, show. Well, show I'm a dork. Maybe you're not a dork. She's I'm a total dorky. dork. You're, yeah. you're more of a nerd. I'm more of a dork. But don't let it go too far. You know what I mean? Like keep some like boundaries. Don't overshare like it's great that we're intimate it's great that we're all girls like whether you want to shave your legs in front of each Keep other a mystery. or not is awesome maybe you don't shave your legs Sexy, i don't know little mystery. but some mystery is good it's good whatever your boundaries are and however you want to have mystery is your bag but some mystery is good because ultimately how much they are your best friend how much you share your life with them each other you do still want to remember that they are hot and sexy and hopefully you want them to remember that you are hot and sexy too because otherwise you're over it and then you want to move out it's a lot of pressure to use. So, keep it fresh and exciting and uh, take it slow. Keep it fresh, keep it clean. Keep, take it slow. I think my advice to you is to take it slow. You know, go once, you know, move in slowly. And, um, yeah. And, and then live happily ever after. <laughs> the end. Okay, if you have any comments, leave them. Uh, post them down there, down, <laughs> down there. And uh, we look forward go to uh, talking to you next time. Bye. Bye.